solve each problem by forming and solving a suitable quadratic equation. And I'm going to show you three problems today, of which this is the first. And each of them have this same idea, that we're going to be forming our own equation, um, whatever it might be. So you're not, I'm not going to hand you an equation. You've got to kind of make it yourself. And then solving it will help us work out the answers, OK? So by now, hopefully, you have the opportunity to sort of scroll down. Good morning, just in time. <laughs> scroll down the diagram. It doesn't have to be beautiful. That's better. They do provide units. There we go. OK, so let's kick this off. Now, I think, being that this is a shape with which we are eminently familiar, you might be able to help me out by suggesting what a first line might be that might get us from geometry, yes, I do have a right angle, from geometry to an equation that I can work with. Strength, suggestion. X squared, X squared equals 2? Was that the suggestion? Um, x oh, OK, hold on. This x, x squared, and there's an x minus 7. I'm going to start writing. x squared, there's an x minus 7. Can someone finish off what Strang's thought is? Why is, why is he squaring? Where, where did that come from? That's not squared. Why is he squaring? Pythagoras, Pythagoras right? So we want to square the two shorter sides. So I should finish that off, right? What do I do with those two squares? I add them, and the sum of the squares on the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the longer side. OK, happy time. So this is the first thing I needed to do. I translated from this geometry into this equation. But now that I know what this equation is, I can somewhat temporarily forget about the fact that it has to do with geometry, because now my quadratic brain kicks in, OK, uh, my algebra brain. So help me out. What am I going to do? Suggestions on this first line. So you'd like to subtract this guy from both sides? Uh, yeah. yeah, let's do it. OK, so I've got x squared plus x minus 7 squared minus x plus 2 all squared. You guys happy with that? Yep, three. Take this guy over to this side, subtract from both sides. So where do you get x equals 2 from? Where, where are you seeing x equals 2? Oh, x, x, make x the subject is, I think, the phrase you're looking for. So you'd like the, like, you want, your suggestion was to move this guy, subtract him from both sides, right? So that you've got x squared equals da 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 Right, OK. Now, I want to think about this suggestion for a minute. I'm going to write it in another color. And then I want us to unpack why this might be useful and why it might not be. So here's one path that we could take. And here's another path. Uh, x squared, you're suggesting I subtract from both sides. So I'm going to get this guy. OK, now, I'm just looking. Yeah, OK. Now, we could totally do this. We've seen before that, especially with algebra problems, but really with any problem that you can do in mathematics, there are lots of ways to, like, there are so many parts to a question. There isn't just one recipe for how to bake a cake. Now, Zaki suggested this way, Sarang suggested this way. Now, why is this like your instinct is to get x by itself over here and then equals da 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 da? Can anyone suggest to me why? Strang's instinct is right, but it just so happens that the particular action he has taken doesn't end up getting us toward the goal that he's after. What's the problem? By subtracting that x minus 7 all squared, why doesn't it actually get me any closer to what Strang wants, which I, which I want too? Yeah. You don't really get enough. You don't really. Aha. Uh -huh. So you said two things there, which are kind of complementary. Um, I don't have a number over here. I still have x terms, don't I? Right? So we want all the x's on one side so that you have x equals blah, blah, blah. But by subtracting this object here, you've moved some of the x's over to the other side. And so you're kind of like, oh, I still have x's everywhere. So it's still kind of a mess, right? But the instinct is correct. We just have to sort of take a bit of a longer path to get there, which is why Zaki's suggestion here, which is ever so slightly different, he's just focused on a different object. This gets all of my x's all on one side, and then I've just got a number over here. So are we OK to continue pursuing this? Yeah? Sarang, are you OK? Do you see why we're going to go this? Yeah? OK? All right. So now what? 
I've got all the X's on one side, but can you, someone else, hold your thought, can someone else give me a suggestion of where I could go forward? Hmm. Let me ask you this. Remember we were talking about the other day, we were talking about simplifying, right? And how simplifying is kind of a weird word because it can mean different things in different contexts. You've got to sort of pay attention to what's going on around to decide whether, for example, sometimes factorizing is the best way to go. Uh, when we were adding fractions together and we had to muck around with the denominators, factorizing was the way to go. Other times, expanding is the way to go. Okay? Now, I'm factorized at the moment. Is this the simplest way I can write this or ex is expanding it simpler? Expanding is simpler, but, but why? Why is expanding? Say it again. Okay. Your suggestion is, I should expand, right? Let's start doing this, and then I'm going to put this question to all of you. As we expand, uh, let's see here, x squared minus 14x plus 49, plus 49. okay? I'm going to continue going. My question is, why does this help us simplify further? I think you all know, by the time I get to the end of this line, you're going to tell me what to ne do next, and I can only do it because I've expanded. Uh, what do I get here? Thank you. By the way, I didn't put brackets here. I could have. But I made a point, you might notice, to put brackets here. Why do you think I did that? Yeah, suggestion. Yeah, so there's this minus sign hanging out here, right? Which I know is a really easy thing to forget. Can you see why this, if I wrote it without brackets? Yeah, you see why this is wrong? Right? Because that minus applies to everything in here. So it needs to apply to everything here. Like so, does that make sense? Okay, now what's the thing? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What's the thing I'm going to do next? This is a way I can simplify, but I couldn't do it in factorized form. What can I do to this? Starts with a C. Something we do to algebra all the time when it's like heaps and heaps of stuff, we're going to collapse it down to something. We're going to collect like terms, okay? Which kind of, I mean, cancelling is like a fractions thing, but it's going to end up looking similar, isn't it? So I've got an x squared here. In fact, and you, you'll notice me, I've been doing this a lot, so hopefully without me telling you so, um, you'll notice how useful it is. I'm getting out more colors, right? Because there's just so much stuff here, I want to be able to sort of sift out what's most important and what's related to each other. So I'm going to circle in a particular color. If you've got another one, I encourage you to get it out. Um, all of my x squared terms, here's one, here's one, and here's another one, okay? Now these are all of the like terms for x squared. You can see I've got a positive one here, a positive one here, and then I'm subtracting one, yeah? So how many x squared terms will I be left with at the end? Think carefully. These are, these are the objects I'm adding and subtracting. No multiplication, right? Just the one, right? So I start off with one. I add one, which gives me two. And then I subtract one, which brings me back to one. Okay? So I've got a single x squared. No multiplication happening. So multiplication would have given me an x to the four. But I'm adding and subtracting. Okay? All right, those are the x squared terms. What am I going to look at next? Yeah, I've got these, um, these x terms in here. But just watch out. There's this minus sign hanging out there attached to that. So I've got minus 14x and minus 4x. So I end up with minus 18x. And then what I have left last is this uh, constant term, right? There it is, 49 and minus 4. 49 minus 4, that's 45, right? Okay, great. Now, so this is, this is, again, you see how so many problems, the whole, like a lot of our effort is to take a problem that looks weird and confusing and to translate it into a problem that, oh, I'm familiar with these. I know how to handle these, right? 